Welcome back fellow coding facilitators, Jared O'Leary here with Boot Up. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can recreate the outer space project that was originally for Scratch Jr., but do it inside of Scratch. So let's take a look at the original project preview. Okay, so this one is all about tapping on stuff to cause it to interact. So we've got our disappearing star, spinning sun, we've got a planet that moves. Star fades in and out, spinning, and that one just fades. We have our shooting star. Oh, that one went away. We have our astronaut that goes all the way out into space and disappears. We have our hopping alien. And then we have our Earth, which will bounce. All right, so that is the original project inside of Scratch Jr. So let's take a look at what it looks like in Scratch. All right, so when I press the green flag, it doesn't do anything. However, it has all the same interactions as before. So I can click and it will cause this to spin. I can click and it will make it disappear. I can click, this is gonna make it spin, get smaller and bigger. I can click and this will make it so that it is going to move all the way back to the same position, just like in the Scratch Junior version. Okay, and that one gets smaller and bigger. We have our shooting star, which is going to fly away. We have our astronaut, does the same idea, and will disappear. We have our hopping alien, and we have our bouncing earth. So all of the same concepts can be done inside of Scratch. And just like with the other projects, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways you can do it. So we click see inside, and let's take a look at the two different versions of the earth. So let's look at the icon-based one, the simpler one. So for this one, we're going back to what we originally recommended in the first couple of projects where you click and then it causes a sound. But in this case, we're going to click and it's going to cause it to jump. So it's gonna make it do that. If however, you would like to use some of the motion blocks instead, you can have a different earth, like this one. And when you click on this one, it's going to glide. So again, all you do is you drag it to where you want it to go. You then use this block and you drag it again to a different location or even say something like this. And then when you click, you're going to tell it how much. So I want to do this really quick, so 0.1, and it's going to make it hop, okay? So that's how you can use X and Y, or you can use the icons to make it so that it jumps. Okay, so for the planets, for the Scratch Junior one, this originally, all you did when you click, it made it move 20, and in Scratch Junior 20 means go all the way across the screen and go back to the exact same location. So the exact same thing happens right here. However, another fun thing that you could do if you use the motion blocks instead of using the icons, so for example, with your like second graders, is when you click, you can actually make it so that the planet will move, and when it gets to the edge, it's going to bounce. And I'm gonna change this so it goes faster so you can see it. So it's gonna just bounce back and forth forever. So the great thing about using these motion blocks is you can make it so that it moves faster and slower and you have more control over it, okay? So let's take a look at the sun. So the icon based one, when we clicked, it would make it so that it moved 48. So that made it so that it would rotate four complete times around. Or we could just simply have it so that it uses the motion box. We repeat however many numbers we want and we turn however many numbers we want. If we wanted to turn a small amount, it will make it so that it goes slow like this. Or if we make it so that it turns a large amount like 100, then it's going to move much faster. Okay, so the stars, similar to some of the earlier projects, it's going to just get smaller and larger. This one gets smaller and larger and it rotates, so it's running in parallel, two things at the same time. This one is going to hide and then show. Our shooting star does have icon-based versions of this. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because we want it to reset back to right here. In Scratch Jr., the sprites automatically go back to where they started when you press the green flag. But in Scratch, we'll actually have to teach kids how to do that. So that's why this is one of the last projects we recommend doing. So you have to tell them to drag it to where you want it to go, and then add that go to block when you press the green flag. You also wanna make it so that it sets to the specific size you want and shows so that way you can actually see it. After that, it's, it's just the same thing as it was in Scratch Junior. So we can make it move to the right and make it so that it moves up. And if you do both of these at the same time, it runs in parallel. So when we click, it moves right and up, and then it changes sizes and hides. Then when we press the green flag, it comes back. Okay, so to do this in Scratch Junior, we could use just the glide block. So this is just saying, okay, we're gonna start here, 
and then we're going to drag it to where we want it to glide to and then all we have to do is tell it how long to do that so we don't have to worry about moving to the right and up at the same time you can just simply use a glide and it'll move diagonally the only thing we have to run in parallel is if you want it to change the size and then hide it so that's a little bit more complicated of a sprite kindergartners probably wouldn't be able to recreate something like this but a second grader certainly could okay so let's take a look at the alien so this one's a lot easier than the shooting star this is running two things at the same time. It is jumping and moving to the right at the same time. So we have our jump and our move to the right. So when you click, it makes it so it hops over to the right. So that's the icons. And then for the X and Y, we simply have it change the X and then we change the Y by with a repeat and then take away the Y with the same number and the same number of repeats. So that way it will hop to the same location. Okay, our last sprite is a little bit more complicated, and this is our astronaut sprite. So just like the shooting star, we need to make sure that we reset it. So point it in the correct direction, go to where we wanted to, set it to the correct size, and show. So a little bit more complicated. Second graders can do this. Kindergartners, maybe not. Depends on your kids. This one runs three things in parallel. So we're turning, we're rotating, we're moving up, and we're changing the size all at the same time. So it does this. Okay, so again, that's a little bit more complicated for some of the younger kids. But they could probably figure it out if you walk them through it. Okay, so let's take a look at what this could look like with the motion blocks. So again, we would reset our sprite. We would make it so that it's going to maybe forever turn. So it just keeps rotating like this. We tell it where we want it to go and how long by using a glide. And then we just change the size. So this goes a little bit slower, which I actually like this one better than the icon based one okay so again using the motion box gives you more control it's just more complicated so that's how you can create the outer space project inside of scratch and there's a couple of different examples of how you can use icons or the motion blocks to get them to create with code thank you so much for watching this video let us know something that you learned or created in the comments below and make sure to subscribe, like, and check out the links in the description for even more free resources, such as videos, free lesson plans, and our podcast.